We were heading from Lake Como to Sardinia when it hit me. I forgot something. Sorry for the typo. Let's rewind. Back, I'm back at the Epic Gas channel. My name is Zolti and this episode is about the Alula Materia. Unless you live under a rock, you heard about the Alula Materia, which is a, a special composite material that they make the leading edge from. So what we tried is not the Ocean Rodeo one, but the D-Lab, D-Lab version, which is the Duotone. So this, this material was just exclusive for Ocean Rodeo for the first one, maybe two years. So the guys at the Duotone, they figured they're gonna use the same material to make their own kite. We had the chance to try the 15 in every conditions. Let's see how we felt about it. All this thanks to Vincent, good friend of mine, who works in the corner shop. Uh, that's a kite shop in Paris, and if you're living in Paris and you want to buy a kite, well, that's the place you should go. The completely new Juice D-Lab is the apex predator of life in kites, and at the top of the food chain. Without a doubt, the lightest in range, featuring the most advanced design innovations, setting you on the water when you think it's impossible. They claim that it's 30% lighter, they claim it's really strong, it turns really, really fast, it flies upwind like no other kites, so it's kind of like a high performance kite. It's a nice idea, so I was like really excited when I, I got my hands on it. I checked a couple online review about this already and uh, well, they, they've been blown away. Uh, even less he made like uh, his own review, he felt a little bit bored about it. About the brand new Juice D-Lab from Juice on Kiteboarding. Maybe it's because it's not his element, he's more like the 30 knot guy. So I measured the kite and it's just a little bit more than three kilograms. There is no so big difference between the simple Juice and the D-Lab Juice. And I found this comment on Duoton webpage. Duoton answered, it's not lighter, 30% than the same juice without the Alula. It's lighter than some other 15 kites. But this doesn't mean anything because when I tried, the real surprise came out. I was in this spot. This is Lake Como Geralario. There was some, some rain developing in the back and usually it's a thermal wind, strong, decent. So it was like something 14, 15 knots not that strong, but still would be okay for the D-Lab. We tried foiling and by that time it was really like five to eight knots and it was on and off, but the kite stayed remarkably well up in the sky. For really light wind, let's imagine eight knots and you're flying a nine or 11 meter kite, it just flies. If you bring it too low on one side, there is no chance to bring it back. The only way to bring it back is to do a down loop and smack it back to the power zone and that will help you to lift the kite. And with the D-Lab, something really insane happened. You could almost go down 45 degree and then lower and then just steer the kite up and just wait for it because it just came back up. There's no magic about it. The whole thing is when you change the direction of the kite, when you actively steer the kite moving in one direction, you need to rotate the whole kite, which is a mass. The weight is critical, and especially the weight of the tips. If you reduce the weight of the tips, even if you keep the high, higher weight in the center, the, the pivoting of the kite is much easier because, you know, the whole lever thing and, and the weight at the end of the lever. That's why we use the flex struts, and now with us, with a Lula and leading edge, but yeah, no brainer. But I'm very curious with the Hokipa, the new Hokipa material is very, very similar as properties, but differently made and probably more lasting. Before the foil, we dropped the kite, we held each other and we relaunched the kite and what I realized is that as soon as the kite took off, there was barely any water dripping off from the kite and that's a big, huge plus. And this Alula material, it's like an Ikea bag, it's, it's really thin, so your kite is not working as a sponge. The leading edge of the 50 meter is something like this, it's not wide at all. Like comparing to something like a, a slingshot turbine, the slingshot turbine leading edge, it's really like my body. A thin of a leading edge will fly so much faster, can pick up so much more speed. So I tried to foil, I, I'm not a great foiler. Actually I managed, boom, I got up and as soon as I had some apparent wind, the power was really crazy. The kite was fast 
came with me, pulled me. I had this feeling like, okay, I can go one way, and maybe not the other. You know, most of the time when you see a kite promo video, they do the relaunch in a shallow water. But once I dropped it and it's deep underneath me, I struggled with relaunching. And yeah, I waited, waited, but then I did my self rescue. Yeah, it worked. It dealt the self rescue very well. <laughs> the rest of the days, we went to the middle of the lake. Was the, the goal to push the limits so we tried in marginal conditions it literally was zero wind and we launched the kite and it did fly we were all like okay wow even if i moved it really really strong and fast it didn't generate so much more power once you can squeeze out power you will get going and you ride and boom the magic works it does what it promises one of the biggest thing it's the drift in these very light conditions, or sub 10 knots, start to fall towards the kite, and the kite just stays there and just goes with you with full line intention, and it was like, wow. If you don't see it, you don't believe it stuff. The real fun began when it got really windy. I'm more like a twin tip guy. Everything it can do in stronger winds, like 15, 17 knots, it's like, wow. Again, the drift is amazing, the lift is great, and the kite is really fast. So when you fly a 15, it feels like rather a 13 or a 12, because it turns fast, it gets there, and you don't have to, you know, pray for it. Like, come on, come on, get there. It just, you steer, it comes. Big thanks to Get High With Mike, because I was inspired by one of his videos when he teaches us how to do a double front roll. And I nailed it, almost like second for third try. He also nailed triple rotations and double inverted back rolls. Easy board offs. Yes, I loved it in, in stronger winds. But I'm not sure it can compete with any foil kite in terms of performance. But if you are someone who is not willing to take the, the step to go with a foil kite because of, you know, self-rescue or just being afraid of, and you don't mind the extra bucks, well, that can be something for you. If the price worth it, I don't know. I let you decide. But yes, it's something something good that the research is going towards. I'm stoked. Thanks again for Corner Shop. Thanks again, Winnie. Let me try. And yeah, guys, you have to try yourself. I'm not sure it's gonna be like for everyone and you do need the skill for it. But I'm sure many of you will have a blast on it. Durability wise, it's only time can tell. Meanwhile, we made it to the beautiful Sardinia and soon you will find me in Sicily. So if you happen to be there, drop me a message because I would love to connect. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.